Oregon 45, UCLA 30. This was a beating, but at the same time, it really wasn't that bad for UCLA. They just didn't capitalize on drives. Like, they, they ended up having to kick field goals a lot more often than I think they planned. Um, but they, they were still very successful on offense. Let's uh, let's pull up the stats here. I, I put down uh, Bo Nix is that dude in the second quarter. He was 11 of 11 for 151 yards and three touchdowns. The onside kick was an awesome strategic advantage. They stole a possession before the rain showed up. And that was the difference in the ballgame, really. Oregon had 28 points in the second quarter. 28 points. They were up 31 to 13 at the half, and that was all she wrote. That was ball game. Uh, you look at the numbers: 545 yards to 448, so 100 yards of total yardage advantage. But when you look at yards per play, 7.4 to 6.5. When you go back over the game on paper and you look at the uh, success rate, like UCLA had a 59 percent successful play rate to only 56 percent for Oregon. Oregon was a little bit more explosive. But this ball game, like the the one UCLA turnover, obviously that hurt. But regardless, this was this was a fun game, and I would like to see it again. I think these teams could be really, really competitive because or it's not like UCLA didn't move the ball on them. UCLA was good. Look at their total EPA in this game, twenty two point three six here, and Oregon's was twenty eight point seven three. So yeah, Oregon was a little bit more. Uh, a little more explosive, was able to finish drives more effectively. But this was not a blowout. This was this was one team being able to finish drives. The other one just was not on the road. Uh, really, UCLA's first road test, maybe should have thought that through before I pet uh, UCLA plus six and a half, but regardless, zone six said Nix is playing so good right now. Bo Nix is playing himself into an NFL draft spot. Uh, who would have thought that was coming? That, remember, this was a... This was a five-star quarterback that went to Auburn because, uh, yeah, the surprise on side. Yeah. <laughs> Humphrey said, surprise on side. Am I right? Uh, look, you know that that rain's coming? You're going to try and steal a possession? Yes, because you've already figured out they can't stop you. And and you may not be able to stop them either. So, steal a possession. Smart move. Uh, but Bo Nix, like, what he's doing is... Absolutely unbelievable right now. His total numbers on the day. Let's uh let's go ahead and pull that up. He was 22 out of 28, 283 yards, five touchdowns. He ran the ball eight times for 51 yards. Uh he is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And it's same on the other side for uh, Zach Charbonnet. By the way, the running back, 20 carries, 151 yards, one touchdown. Uh DTR, 27 out of 39, 262, two touchdowns, one pick. He ran the ball eight times for 38 yards. Like, these were fun football teams. Uh, Kenny Dillingham is the offensive coordinator for the Oregon Ducks. This is his first job where he is the guy. This is his offense. There's a great story. Mitchell Forty uh, wrote for, uh, good grace, is it, uh, is it the Oregon rival side or Oregon 247 side? I do not really. Go, go look up Mitchell Forty on Twitter. Uh, he wrote an article about Kenny Dillingham and how this Ducks offense is so effective and so uh, just successful overall. And it's a great story about Dillingham. He is absolutely fantastic. Like, I I was... I know, I remember following him because he was with Norvell at Memphis. And then he took the Auburn OC job, but he wasn't calling plays. He was trying to scheme up an offense and let Gus Malzahn call the plays. And then after one year, he left and joined Mike Norvell as the offensive coordinator at Florida State. But that is still Norvell's team. He's the play caller. Norvell is the dude. Now he goes to Oregon, and he takes everything that he's learned from everywhere he's been, and he is the guy. And I, he is super young, but I fully believed that he would not be a candidate for that Arizona State job. And I might be wrong. Because his offense has been that good this year. Now, he may stay at Oregon, for sure. But he's going to be a candidate for a lot of jobs because this offense is unfreaking real right now. They are so good. All right. Let's, uh, oh, cheers to Oregon. Big win. Cheers to UCLA. Uh, stayed competitive in that game. They didn't give up. And that was impressive. 
Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.